the U.S. Senate recently advanced the so-called Respect for Marriage Act. This bill, if signed into law, would erase the sacred definition of marriage as being between one man and one woman, and it would glorify unions between members of the same sex, labeling them marriages. Twelve Republican senators voted across the aisle with Democrats to the dismay of many conservatives. The House of Representatives is voting on the bill this week, and joining me now for more details is the president of the American Principles Project, Terry Schilling. Terry, thanks for joining me in studio. Thanks for having me, Prudence. So let's start by just having you break down how disgusting and wrong and perverse it would be for a bill like this to be signed into law here in America. I think the thing that makes this legislation so egregious is how it essentially criminalizes anyone that disagrees with gay marriage. The thing that I keep questioning is, why are Republicans selling us out and giving more power to the LGBT lobby? That We've given the LGBT lobby just a tiny bit of power, and they have totally taken advantage. And I'm not talking about just getting people fired from their jobs for opposing gay marriage. I'm talking about grooming our kids in schools, right? This is an agenda, this is a movement that will never be satisfied. And the idea that Republicans still think that if they just give them a little bit more, they'll go away. You're feeding the fire, you're feeding the beast, and it's gonna continue to destroy this country. So it's gonna have a really bad effect on, on not just all churches, but my favorite church, the Catholic Church. Right, yeah, you and me both. And you know, talk to me a little bit more in that vein about how we got here to the point where Republicans, who are supposed to be conservative, would support something. Thing like this. I think you can trace it all back to a big lie that so many conservatives have adopted that has greatly benefited the left um, and has also benefited the people that really don't like our issues. And that lie is that culture, I'm sorry, that politics is downstream of culture. When you really look at it, especially here in America, where political equality is what we were founded on, politics is at the center. Right. Politics is actually upstream of culture in so many ways, right? When you when you change the law you change the culture. Uh, and so we don't think about, we have to start thinking about politics not being downstream of culture. We have to think about it as part of the culture because what happens is when the left gets a big victory like Obergefell, what do we do as conservatives? We run back and we write white papers, we do videos to educate people about this. And then by the time we've built up a big enough coalition, they're already moving on to things like sex changes for minors and grooming kids in schools. It's a nightmare and we need to start thinking more proactively. Yeah, great point. And you know, what's your message to Republicans in the House right now who could still be in favor of this legislation? You know, I ask because a whopping 47 Republicans have already voted in favor of this before. So what's your message to them right now? My message is that if you really care about your own family, if you care about your, your church, if you want your kids to stop being groomed in schools and being taught about homosexuality and transgenderism, stop feeding the beast. Make a tough stand. It's not even that tough. You're not gonna be punished at the polls. You're not gonna lose your race for voting to protect churches and their ability to dissent from gay marriage. The, the thing is, they wanna act like this is um, equal to interracial marriage and opposing that. They're fundamentally different. I can think of a million reasons why we should oppose gay marriage. I can't think of a single one to oppose interracial marriage. Sure. Um, so just be brave, do the right thing, and it's gonna be smart politics long term. Right, and speaking of feeding the beast, before I let you go, I know your group just published an in-depth report on the problem of transgenderism. It's called the Transgender Leviathan. Where can our viewers read it and, and what will they learn? You can find it at AmericanPrinciplesProject.org. It's, uh, it's hot off the presses. We just launched it last week. What you'll learn is that this transgender movement is actually not a movement of gender-confused people who are just you know, a sexual minority organizing in politics to protect their rights. What it really is, is it's a front for big pharma. It's a front for the hospitals. It's a front for these corrupt doctors and these, these corrupt associations to make money and exploit these gender-confused people. We've had gender dysphoria and you know, people that we call transgender since the beginning of time, people have always felt uncomfortable with their own bodies, but we never profited off of it. We never created an industry beyond it. And that's what we do with the Transgender Leviathan, is we show where the money's being made, how it's being done, and why it's being pushed. These guys in Big Pharma will reinvest their profits back into politics and legislation to protect their profits and protect their ability to continue to exploit these people. We have to put an end to it. Yeah, could not agree more. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Terry Schilling, and for all the work that you do at American Principles Project. Thanks, Prudence.